Good morning, I'm Steve Thomas, and welcome once again to the loft here at Ask This Old House, where our team of uniformed attendants stands by, ready to answer every question. I bet you Richard's doing something on toilets. You think? Always. No. We were really surprised at the number of calls we had about rocking toilets. Rocking, rocking toilets. Toil rock and rolling. And today we're going to do something about it. What about you, Tom? I'm actually working on a problem that a lot of people have around the house, trying to keep their gutters clean. Their gutters. Want to see it? Yeah. 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 Let's take a look. We got the letter, it said, look for a little cape with two beautiful maple trees in front. And boy, how pretty they are. And what a nice cape house. I love these style houses. This is pretty well maintained, too. Our homeowner, Tom Silver, asked this old house. Roy Lynn. Tom. Hi, Roy. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Nice fresh paint job, I can tell. Well, not exactly. It's about five years old. Oh, really? Yes. Boy, well capped, well capped. Well, thank you. Come in. All right. Oh, I love this breezeway, the way you connected the garage and the house. Very well furnished. Is this heated? It is not heated. Not heated. We use it uh, for the three seasons, uh, but we use it quite a bit. Yeah, I bet you do. Come this in. is nice. I have a nice cup of coffee and a brunch out here. Oh, boy, this is beautiful. Boy. Nice dining room, living room. Now, this house is built in the 50s? Mid-50s. Mid Mid-50s. Exactly. You are the first owner, second owner? We're or the second owners. Uh, we moved in in 1977. Yeah. Well, you keep it up very well, I can tell. Thank you. Come in. All right. Nice kitchen. Oh, and you must be? I'm Sandra. Sandra. How are you? Nice Hi. to meet you. My sister's name is Sandra. I'll remember that name. It's a good name. <laughs> so we got your letter, and you guys wrote about gutters. Yes. Uh, I would like to keep him off of the ladders. Uh, well, they know, off the ladders, yeah. They, a lot of injuries are, are, uh, occur during the weekend when people are up working on their house, on ladders, they fall. Uh, actually, one of the guys that uh, I know in the job fell, and he brought two rotocuffs. So it's not a bad idea to keep him on the ground. He spends a lot of time up there. Yeah. Well, I was uh, in the uh, military pilot for about 22 years, and uh, I used to like it up in the air, but I guess uh, <laughs> she's going to ground me now. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, it's not a bad idea, right? Really. Well, let's take a look outside and see what your problem is. Come right outside here. Well, you got a great backyard, Roy. you got a lot of leaves back here, too. Certainly do. Ah, these gutters don't look original to the house. What's up with that? Indeed, they're not original. They were replaced about four years ago with, uh, we replaced some wooden gutters that were up there, and there was uh, quite a bit of uh, maintenance associated with those. Well, that must have kept you up on the ladder a lot, <laughs> and I don't think Sandy appreciated well, that. Well, I, right? I had to oil them and uh, clean them out, and it was about a three-day event on each occasion. Oh, yeah, I know that. I know that. Well, how are these working out for you? Well, they're certainly uh, uh, low maintenance but they still allowed the leaves to collect in them. So then I uh, decided to... Uh, oh, yeah, screen system. Yes. So I went to the home center, and I got these, and I installed them. Mm -hmm. They're very easily uh, installed because you snap this on the edge of the gutter, and you slide this on the, under the uh, roof, shingle, roof yeah. shingle. Yeah, while they're keeping the leaves out. They do keep so the leaves out. So they don't have to clean them. Well, not exactly. The, uh, the problem is, is that these screen doesn't screen out everything. It allows some small particles to get into the gutter, uh, and as a result, about at the end of every year, uh, there's a sludge that collects in the gutter. So you still got to clean it? Yes. So I'm up on the ladder cleaning out the gutter at least once, once more every year. Oh, boy. Well, let's take a look. Boy, looking at the face of this gutter, this is telling me that water coming off of the roof, some of it might be going over the screening system and running over the face of the gutter. You can see the dirt collecting there. Might be spilling on the ground. Is that what's happening here also? Exactly. In the wintertime, uh, the water hits the pavement in front of the doorways and freezes, and it creates a slippery surface. Well, you're not safe anywhere in this house, Roy. I guess not. <laughs> well, gutters, keeping them clean is a very important part of, of your house, and nobody wants to be going up and down a, a ladder on a weekend doing that. But there's a couple of companies out there trying to address this problem. I've set up a site with a couple of different systems. Would you like to combine and see how they work? Sounds great. All right, let's go. Well, Roy and Sandra, you can see I've applied an aluminum gutter to the side of this roof and a couple of different systems applied to the top of the gutter to protect it against the leaves. And they work on surface tension. When the rainwater comes off the roof, it sticks to the top of this and sucks itself down into this slot. Any of the leaves or debris is supposed to fall away. Let's see if we can create a little rainstorm with this hose up on the roof. I see the water is going over the edge there into the gutter. Mm -hmm. That seems to be working pretty well. That one well. seems to be working. Let's slide over and take a look at this one. That works on that one too. How about some leaves? What well, happens to the leaves if they're on I've got a bucket of leaves right over there in back of Sandra. Grab those and throw them right on the face of it. 
Yeah, well, they didn't go into the gutter. They're hanging on the edge, but they're not falling yeah, in. I saw a little uh, maple seed pod go it did, did slipping it. in there. Very observant. So, Tom, what, what does this cost? Well, these have to be installed by the dealer representative. All right, so these are installed at around ten to fifteen dollars a foot. Your house would probably be twenty-five hundred dollars. Mm. One night in the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> one night in the hospital. Now, if that's a little pricey for you, this unit right here is installed by you, the man, your homeowner, and this is around a dollar a foot or two hundred dollars. Well, well, that's more like it. Yeah, it's a lot less money. But he has to install it. He's back He's up on the ladder. ladder. Paying attention, Sandra. All right. Well, here's another option. This is an all-in-one. This is a gutter and a cap to protect it from the debris. Now this is installed by the manufacturer again. It's around $20 a foot, and your house would probably be around $4,000. Now what happens to my existing gutters? They have to come off for this to go on. So my four-year-old gutters have to come off to put these on? Correct. For the, to the tune of about $4,000? Right, right. Now that sounds a little steep to me. Well, Roy, if uh, money seems to be an issue, we have this product right here. This is basically a round like broom system. It drops in the gutters, covers the outlet hole, the leaves oh, and debris don't block that, I but don't. the water flows underneath. I don't know about that one. <laughs> you don't know. You <laughs> want to try, try your leaves, the leaves again? Let's try the leaves on that one. <laughs> well? Oh, they get caught in there. That looks like a leaf collector to me. Well, maybe it is, but Roy might have to get up there to clean. But at least the water is still running free, and it's getting into the downspout. Well, I'm getting real here for a minute. Okay. I think that uh, if I was to have to choose something today, I'd yeah. probably get over and choose one of these two things here. And okay. they look like they they really work. Um, the cost is a little on the uh, steep side, but it might be worth it. Like the Sanders said, it does... Uh, keep you on the ground. It keeps me on the ground, and, and one night in the hospital. Of course, I'm not insured <laughs> for these, but I am insured at least for a night in the hospital. But what about the seed pods that might slip in there? What happens if well, that happens? One of the benefits to the companies that have they are installed by the dealers is they offer a lifetime warranty to come and clean your gutter if any debris gets in there to clog them. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. Of course, there, a, a real solution would be to have... Uh, a roof that was only this high, then I could get out there and clean them standing on my own two legs. <laughs> that wouldn't be too comfortable for you to have a house this Might work for me, though. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Thanks, Tom. My pleasure. And now, it's time for What Is It? Gentlemen, is golf stainless steel in here? A little spring action to it? Mm -hmm. What is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Richard, when I go up to Aunt Bessie's Donna, she takes and stores all the napkins in there, and we just pull them one by one Roger, from the top. I've been to that diner. I've never seen that. <laughs> no, 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 napkins, no napkins. I know what this is. Uh, Unfortunately, I hate to tell you this, but it's a utility knife holder. All right? When cutting insulation, you know, you always take a board and you lay it on the insulation yeah. to compress it. Yeah. This, you don't need the board. This simply compresses the insulation That's cool. and cuts. That's actually a pretty yeah. useful tool. That is a good one. I don't want him to play anymore. Right. <laughs> I want to hear his guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, if he's so smart, maybe he knows what that is, too. You know, it's funny. I have one of these, and I have no idea. I've never known what it does. So what I do is I store golf balls in it. Golf balls? <laughs> ball? They'll fall through. It's a tennis ball a golf ball. Yeah, but I don't think so. See this series of holes, Richard? Yes, I do. I mount this on the wall, and then I can drop my rakes and my shovels right down in there. Yeah. So sure, it's right. just a holder. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't no. think so. Yeah, your ground looks great. No, but I can see where it would come handy in the... And it probably... Yeah, that's what it is. This is a, a drywall lift. See that? You, you let, drop your sheet of drywall on there, and then put it against the wall. You pick up, <laughs> then you screw it I, off. I give you points for being inventive. Hey, I'm ones. telling you, that's what it is. All right, well... It's really weak, Tom. It is for construction, but the idea is that an electrician wants to mount his boxes at the same height off the floor all through the house. Mm -hmm. So you wedge the box in there, and then you take it over... And you set it down. That's a pretty good idea. That gives you the precise height off the floor. You screw it in, and there you not go. Not bad. Not bad. That's well, not too bad. level, you're in great shape. Yeah. you got to <laughs> sweep it first, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's Which right. nobody does. <laughs> now, I'm still going to use mine for the golf balls. Right? <laughs> well, this must be the place. They said look for a American flag and some Halloween decorations. Whoop, they're here. Hi, I'm hey. Richard from Mass Thistle House. How are you? Parker. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. Hi. Come on, meet the family. I tell you, this house looks is very comfortable to me. I grew up in a house just like it. Well, there's plenty of them. There sure are. Living room, oh, yeah. dining room, right off the kitchen. kitchen. Hey, everybody's hanging out in the kitchen, as always. I'm Richard. Hi, Maureen Parker. Hi, nice Maureen. How are you? And you are? Sarah. Hi, Sarah. How do you do? Good. I love your hair. Thank you, Sarah. And you are? Kevin. Hi, Kevin. That's a nice handshake. 
Thanks for letting us barge in here and visit you today. Great. No problem. Hung around the dining room a little bit. Living room where everybody always hangs. Yep. Now, Steve, show them the bookcases and the mantelpiece that uh, you I made. I guess I could show you the uh, bookcase. I built those. Good. The uh, mantel. We're in the process of doing the floors. I think Norm would be proud of that. I don't know I'll about that. I'll have to that. tell him. <laughs> now, the bedrooms are always bedrooms down the corner. Down the hallway. Yeah, right down. My bedroom would have been down here on the left. And that would be Kevin's room. Wow. I never kept my bedroom this clean, Kevin. You're doing pretty good. You want a bed? Karate Fancy bed? cars? Karate. Ooh. I'm going to leave you. <laughs> Who's over here? Is this your room, Sarah? Great. I love the puppies. You like doggies? Yeah. Yeah. I do, too. Yeah. That's your favorite, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's having a Michelle's Menagerie come for her birthday where they're bringing rainforest animals Great. right to the house. Great. <laughs> now, but I didn't come to visit the bedrooms. I always no. get sent to the bathroom. The bathroom. Well, interestingly enough, the bathroom is the one room we haven't done anything with yet yep. in the 10 years we've been here. But the toilet's always been wobbly. Yeah, rocking away. And um, it's gotten worse recently, and we're kind of worried about what might happen. I tell you, it's amazing how many letters we've gotten on this complaint. Is it open down below in the basement? Yes, it is. Let's take a peek there and see sure. what it looks like. Absolutely. Right. At our house, we call the lower level the den. Yeah, that's right. Uh, family room, television room. Sure. We finished this off about two years ago. Great. You do a lot of the work? Uh, some of it, yeah. Great. Nice office here. Yeah. Comfortable yeah. seating. Yeah. Sure we enough. We live down here. Yeah. We do. Very often we're down here. Okay. So the bathroom we're talking about is right above us here. That's right. And here's the laundry. Good. Yeah. And I, I have a light out here for Good. you. Thank you. <laughs> Come prepared, yeah. All right. So there's our cast iron stack, and there's the bend up in there and up. Underneath there is the cast iron frame. A little bit of rot, I see. The floor doesn't look too bad, though. That's good. Well, let's just talk about what it could be. Anytime there's a rocking toilet, it could be just a simple bolt that's broken, and you change that, and it's simple. You know, you're out the other side. But it could also be the flange. Now, that's the cast iron flange that, if that's broken, you'd have to replace the flange. You gotta, it's a little bigger job. Or sometimes these toilets have leaked so much that they rot the plywood floor away, and then it's the tile also, and it's a big job. Mm -hmm. So we won't really know until we dig into it a little bit by pulling that toilet upstairs. You up for help me a little bit? Sure. Great. You got another toilet in the house? Yeah, we do. Okay. Sorry. I don't always fix it the first time. <laughs> no I'll run to the truck. I'll see you upstairs. Absolutely. Okay. All right. We're set to go. Let's pull this thing out of here. So first, we start by turning the water off. Down there. Down low. There we go. There's a shut off valve. Turn it clockwise. Carefully. No, clockwise. You're rather clockwise. Okay. Is it all the way? It is, yeah. Okay. Now flush the toilet. We just want to get all the water out. And the fact that we see no more water coming back in means you did get it shut off. Okay. Hold that tank lever down so it stays empty in the tank all the way. Okay. So now we've got to get all the water out. So you could use a turkey basin, you could use a sponge. This water's clean here. Right. And oh, it's not holding. The shut off's not holding. Hear it, Ryan? Yeah, I do. So be careful now. Don't. Okay. Careful. Don't go too hard. Careful. Let me just. It is not holding tight. Well, I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Looks like we gotta shut it off downstairs. So the main is down here in the equipment room. Okay. Let me turn that off, okay? Sure. I don't wanna break it. This is our last line of defense here. <laughs> There's never enough shut offs in a house either. Okay, so just tight enough. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> you need to do the tank and the bowl. And while you're doing that, I'm going to check the truck for a wax ring and a repair flange. We're probably going to need that. All right. Now, that is really loose on this far side. This, But this side seems to be holding tight. Now, let's get these bolts out and pull the toilet. Loose on one side, but not on the other. Well, it, I assume that just one side of the flange or bolt broke. You know, the other side's still in good shape. Right. Last thing is to break the water connection up high here, and that wants to go counterclockwise. So this is uh, China, right? It could break when you pull yeah, it. Yeah, if uh, if you leave it rocking and somebody pushes too hard, it could snap right off. Now we're all clear to pull this up and away. Now, what we're going to need is some newspaper to set this on. I'm going to pull it straight up. Okay, let's just set that there for a second. Now let's see what we got here. Here's the old wax ring, and I can pry this away. 
And here's what the flange should look like, look like on this side. See how there's cast iron right there and the bolt is held perfectly. On the far side, the cast iron flange is completely broken away, and so this bolt is doing nothing. So there's why the rockings happen. First step is to clean this all away. Do you have a, an old newspaper? Yeah. i got to put this wax ring somewhere. Okay, so this. There's that. And now what is this stuff, anyway? It's, it's wax, just like a candle, but a little bit softer. So it'll seal the bottom of the bowl against sewer gases. Now, a good tip is to put a rag down here to keep sewer gases from coming up and also to keep uh, things from falling down in. So we'll go there. Just look over my shoulder here, Steve. This is a new cast iron flange. Uh -huh. It's a pretty major deal to make this connection. You pour lead down inside here and then have to cock it in place. Right. The one you have is broken off right here on the side of the flange so that a closet bolt like this can't key in and hold the, t the t bowl tight to the flange. Right. Now, it's a pretty major thing to change this thing out. I see. What I'd like to try is this. This is a stainless steel repair plate, and that can mount underneath the broken part, but the trick to it is whether or not I can break away the tile enough to get that underneath. I see. You up for that? Sure. Okay. Let's give it a shot. There you go. Work it back a little bit. Good. How far it up? Let's try that. Not too much. Try this down here now. Looks like it's breaking good. So Steve, the last little bit we need is just that little edge yep. right there. And you can see the outline of the toilet. See that? We can go sure. this far. So make that okay. make that piece go away and we'll clean it up and see if it'll fit. Okay, is that all out of there? Quite good. There we go. Here we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we take the bolt and we key it in through the opening. There we go. And we're good to go. So uh, what's what's to keep this thing from sliding back out? Well, when these are tightened down, it's going to pull that flange really tight. There's no way it's going to drop out. I see. All right, well, here's the new wax ring. Mm -hmm. This one has a horn on it. The other choice is this type, which doesn't have a horn. When I'm working on old work like this, I like this. Uh -huh. Okay? I'm going to set it down right there. And this can also help hold the bolts just at the right opening. Right there. And now we're ready for the toilet. Now, so this wax ring is holding everything together here, right? Right. It's actually keeping sewer gases out, but also it keeps water from leaking down to the basement. Now just rock that back and forth. I like to have the wax rings at room temperature, so it'll really mold to the bottom of the bowl well. I don't want it ice cold. Right. Okay, tighten up the bolts. Now there's a hierarchy in how this goes together. The first piece is plastic, and that'll be for the bolt cap to snap onto. The next is a brass flat washer, and next it's a brass nut. Everything needs to be brass around here. Okay, now we want to tighten these bolts, and we do not want them too tight that we could break the china. So you just want to snug it on both sides, a little bit at a time. Okay, that's about right on this side. Now, this bolt cap wants to go on, but it can't. We have to cut this brass bolt to fit. There's no part of this job that's much fun, Richard. Oh, come on. I'm having a blast. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad. Do you want me to cut that for you? No, you can get the other one. Here it comes. There we go. Take a little rag, get the rest of that out, and the bolt cap goes on. All right, Steve, why don't you give that a try and see if it still rocks? All right. Nope. Absolutely not. It's not moving anywhere. Wow. That was pretty good. I can't believe it. Hey, Maureen, you got to check this out. Is what, she out there? Say. Yeah, I'm here. Let me see. I'll check this out. You guys are working hard, huh? Let me see. Well, hardly working. Excellent. Wow. I am delighted. Hey, good job. Oh, finally, you got <laughs> hey. the plumbing down, huh? <laughs> well, what think, what's the verdict? Awesome. We're <laughs> delighted. We can't believe it. What do you think, Sarah? Even Sarah can't push it she over. She can't push it over. <laughs> After all these years, I can't tell you how happy I am. I just, it's one of those things. That it's a home? small thing. Well, yeah, okay, you can, but we like, have so many other things that you can do. But. No, i got to run. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We really appreciate it so much. Oh, Richard, you're a doll. I think the happiest one in that family was that little girl. She really was. She was a cutie. Mm. So how long did they live with a rocking toilet? I think they said it was like 10 years. 
10 years. I couldn't stand it. Well, Why wait? They just learned <laughs> to live with it, I guess. <laughs> but it never really, gets better. Yeah, to it, sit really still. That's right. It never I, gets better. I actually have one that's been like that for about 20 years. You are so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> So, folks, if you have any questions about maintaining your old house, whether it's two weeks old or 200 years old, write us, or better still, email us here at Ask This Old House. So until next time, I'm Steve Thomas. I'm John Silva. I'm Rich Trithui. And I'm Roger Cook. For Ask This Old House.